This is the Super Bowl of AI. For 30 years, we've been advancing this form of computing we call accelerated computing. We invented the GPU. We invented the programming model called CUDA. Accelerated computing, its moment has now arrived. Uh, it took us 30 years to reinvent computing and started this complete AI platform shift. And now the industry is off on a decade-long build-out. And so really excited, really excited with the achievement. Tell me about manufacturing this Blackwell chip in Arizona, Jensen. How difficult was that to achieve to bring such an important chip production here to America? Well, first of all, AI is an industrial revolution. And this is the most important technology of our time, potentially the most important technology of all time. And when President Trump first took office, uh, he wanted us to manufacture these critical technologies onshore. He wanted to reindustrialize the United States. He wants to have energy growth. He wants to make sure that the United States is a leader in artificial intelligence. And in order, to do, in order to do so, we need to lead in energy. We need to lead in chips. We need to lead in building AI infrastructures and factories, including lead in building AI models, of course, but also using AI in all the different applications in various industries, from healthcare to manufacturing to robotics to, you know, science and, and uh, industry. So uh, he, wanted, he wanted that uh, in his administration, and uh, he wanted it at the speed of light. And so I told him that we were bringing manufacturing back. Within nine months, with the partnership of TSMC, which is an incredible partner for the United States, Foxconn, Wistron, Amcor, and Spill, we've been able to manufacture now the most advanced AI chip in the world completely in the United States and Arizona. The, 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 the workers worked incredibly hard, the mechanical engineers, the mechanical, the electricians, the plumbers, the construction workers, they all worked around the clock. Nine months later, we're now in volume production of the most advanced AI chip in the world. Is it much more expensive to do it in the United States versus Taiwan? It is, it is more, more expensive to do it in the United States, but we're going to get better over time. You know, re-onshoring re manufacturing and the first uh, plant of its kind, it's going to cost a little bit more money, but that's okay. The, the, uh, the national security benefits, uh, the supply chain resilience benefits, the job creation benefits here in the United States, you know, we're going to manufacture chips, systems, and those systems are going to, these, these AI supercomputers are going to go into what are going to be AI factories, which are going to be used by every single industry in the United States. And so this is going to create, over time, you know, my guess is millions of jobs. Electronic show, or CES, is set to kick off in Las Vegas. Investors will be watching and listening closely to commentary from top CEOs. Last year, CES featured a flashy, robot-filled speech from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang, who is scheduled to deliver a January 5th keynote. Here with the top three things to watch at the conference this year is Yahoo Finance tech editor Dan Howley. Dan, great to see you here. What should investors keep in mind? Yeah, Jared, as you kind of pointed out, the, the first things are going to be uh, Jensen's keynote, uh, as well as rival AMD CEO Lisa Su's keynote. Uh, both of them will be speaking on January 5th about their various offerings. This is a consumer electronics show, so naturally you can expect a number of consumer announcements, consumer-focused announcements. That could be things like new graphics cards for gamers, uh, new partnerships, things along those lines. But they've also expanded out to try to push more of their AI side uh, of the business. So, you know, last year we saw Jensen talk about the robots, as you kind of mentioned, uh, their software offerings through NVIDIA, uh, as well as some of their future plans for smaller uh, form factor devices, which they released this year, uh, a desktop kind of AI server that individuals can use on their own. Uh, AMD did the same thing basically uh, with their own event and we're also going to be seeing some some uh, announcements from Intel and Qualcomm. So it really is going to focus primarily out of the gate on NVIDIA uh, and AMD. And then, you know, AI hardware is going to be uh, another large part of the show. We've had, uh, you know, companies like Microsoft, uh, HP, Dell, uh, any, any computer maker kind of discussing this idea of AI hardware when it comes to AI PCs. Not just that, though. You can see some wearables that are AI focused, maybe some pendants, you know, things along those lines. Um, there's sure to be some vaporware mixed in there. 
uh, you know, just products mm -hmm. that get announced and then never really see the light of day, or they're just kind of looking for acquisitions down the line. Uh, and so th those are some of the the other products. And then, you know, I think one of the other things that people really have uh, kind of noticed over the years is the change for a, a lot of CES towards kind of an auto show uh, motif where, you know, an entire hall is dedicated to automotives and not just cars though, there's uh, flying car concepts, uh, different types of drones. And last year or the year before, there was a uh, multi-ton uh, Caterpillar dump truck that was supposed to have autonomous capabilities. John Deere uh, is there. Uh, there's a bunch of different boating companies. So transportation in general uh, gets a, a lot of love uh, at CES, and we're expected to see more of that this year. Of course, AI will be a big part of that. Uh, Self-driving is a huge push, uh, seeing a huge push. It's It's been kind of, you know, what one of the biggest announcements that we see at CES every year or kind of the prediction of when we'll get actual full self-driving. You know, there's still a bunch of kinks to be worked out if you've seen any of the latest news out of Waymo, but uh, it is much better than it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it does seem as though this year is going to just be completely dominated by AI. You know, I love that we're still trying to make flying cars a thing. It's only been about 70 years. Maybe it's going to happen this year. But I want to talk to you about AI and the broad picture for 2026 because AI is appearing in everything right now. And we're used to talking about large language models or LLMs. Now I've been talking about small language models or SLM, SLIM, with a number of guests. And that is you, you can put these, these language models in a device and it can compute its own AI. That's one trend, but uh, what are some of the others or any comments on what I've said here? Yeah, I mean, the, those smaller language models you'll see on uh, things like those uh, AI PCs, you know, uh, Microsoft's been making a huge push with that. Uh, as I said, along those, along uh, the partner manufacturers, the HP's, uh, Dell's, uh, things along those lines, uh, smartphone makers also lean heavily on those. Uh, but I think we'll just continue to see these kind of questions circle around the, the eventual payoff with AI, where where this actually does go. And, you know, there's been survey after survey saying, oh, some companies are, are doing great when it comes to AI, when it comes to getting a return or seeing improved uh, uh, efficiencies. Others times we've seen things where it says, well, companies aren't really seeing a return. I think that's going to continue to be a big part of this conversation with regards to AI. Uh, also, how much money is going to be funneled into it uh, is going to continue to be a big part of the conversation. You know, the, the hyperscalers, hundreds of billions of dollars are being pumped in through a uh, data center build out. Uh, that's going to be a big topic of conversation, uh, whether or not there'll be a pullback on spending, if Nvidia can keep it up. But you know, I, I think really it's going to be that kind of up and down that we saw over the last year where you know there was this sense of everything's great, you know, uh, euphoria reigns, mm -hmm. and then kind of the, the storm clouds come in when there's any hint of bad news. Uh, I, I think it's going to continue to kind of be that way in this year. That's right, and I think uh, DeepSeek is a long ways in the past here, but that was about 10 months ago, and that just kind of threw everything uh, for a whack there, but uh, really great talking with you, Dan, and have a happy 